when it's not simply uh, the environment. Uh, it's the people in that environment and it's the things in that environment right. that you have to be guarded uh, against as well. Very true. Welcome to Mission Driven. I'm Derek. And I'm Brother A. Mission Driven is here for us to provide you with information and resources to help you identify those around you that may be struggling with life debilitating addictions. We are a Christ based organization that works with addicts every day. Brother A, this it's been a minute since we've done yeah, an episode. It's, it's been a minute. Uh, uh, and ho- hopefully, those who are our listeners uh, haven't thought we uh, have, had discontinued uh, the program. But right. If we've just life and other things yeah, have gotten, yeah. we've gotten busy with a whole bunch of different stuff. And I mean, I know you you are a reservist and I thank you for your service. So you had some duties that you had to do for correct, the Navy. Correct. Correct. Uh, uh, my military service, uh, was on orders for about a month there and in Las Vegas of all places, which, which will, uh, well, play somewhat into our topic today as well. Right. And I just, I'm sorry, you're in the Navy and you're in a landlocked area. That's still kind of confusing to me, but anyway, that's, that's a discussion for well, another time. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, uh, we have a reserve center okay. that's located on Nellis Air Force Base in uh, Las Vegas um, and uh, not far from the Strip, actually. Right. Uh, and, and I actually uh, stayed in a hotel in the area, the Marriott, in an area called Summerlin that was right outside of uh, uh, the Vegas Strip. Okay. Uh, but that, 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 that's... Uh, a topic too. I think I might uh, I'll include in this uh, discussion today. Okay, mm-hmm. and our discussion today we're going to be talking about influence, uh, the places that you go, the people that you see. How does that affect those that are recovering from addiction and that aspect of it? So, how can we keep that from being yeah, so, a huge influence on there? So, so a very po- important piece when it comes to recovery or concept that I might say that is talked about in, in recovery and treatment facilities uh, all across the U.S., uh, not just secular treatment, but also faith-based is, right. the, is the subject of people, places, and things. Okay. How that influences or impacts recovery or the recovering addict. Right. And so it's important that, that this is something we address from a relapse prevention standpoint. Okay. Um, because it has a it plays a significant role in whether or not the recovering addict can be successful where recovery is concerned. Right. And I can completely understand because, I mean, there's a lot of different triggers that may when you walk into an area. So say like you were just in Vegas and Correct. somebody that has struggled with gambling. Correct. Because, I mean, we think gamb- gambling with Vegas. And so. But they have gone through the program. They, they're not gambling anymore, but they're walking through there for even on a business trip and they're having to stay at a hotel that has a casino. Right. So if, so if you talk about uh, you start with when we're talking about people, places and thing, if you start with talking about uh, places, first of all, when you're talking about p- people, places and things, you're talking about uh, where from a recovering addict standpoint, you're talking about. Uh, the potential triggers right in terms of relapse right and so uh, you know it's something you know to consider in terms of the people you associate with the places you go and the things you do so if if I put it in context with places in terms of Las Vegas I'm a recovering addict myself right going on 28 years right and and uh, you know so I so I, I had orders I had to go to Vegas uh, to do this job, I had to be very mindful uh, of where I was as a recovering night. Right. Uh, even though I was in the place Las Vegas, there were right. places in the place Las Vegas right. that I had to be cautious about allowing myself to engage. Right. Um, going down to the strip. Right. Uh, going into in in casinos even though i've never been a gambler type right. even in my addiction i was never a gambler but there is a such thing uh, as transference of addiction right too. we've talked you about know. that yeah so so if i allowed myself to get uh engaged in that it could be a problem right right but not only las vegas is not simply known for the gambling that's the big piece that's what, right you know but they're known as being sin city they're known yeah. Yeah. Uh, for the party life that's right marijuana is legal there Oh, wow. 
Yeah. Marijuana is legal there in surrounding counties. Prostitution That's right. is legal there. Uh, and so there was a there's a number of things that I had to be mindful about being in the place, Las Vegas. But right. also when the thought come came to go to even certain places in Las Vegas. Right. I had to be on guard. Right. And even being careful with even certain shows that you may go see, too. Correct. Correct. I mean, I don't know if they're because of COVID. I don't know if they're doing a lot of shows right now. But but in, in, in normal it, season, that's something it's that you have to be careful. Interesting, you bring with. that up. You know, this is uh, that's this was my second time in Vegas in the last three months. Uh, I spent I spent the whole month of May there, uh, pretty much. Um, but I was there also back in March for about uh, four or five days, uh, and you know, I haven't really seen much in terms of closures there. Right. Um, okay. It, it was pretty much in full effect all right um shows well it is sin city yes yes they don't so abide by the normal rules they don't, they don't <laughs> abide by the normal rules and so. and so uh uh that was that was one interesting thing to me you know yeah. they were wearing masks but the key ca- the casinos were packed <laughs> yeah yeah so and we're, we're, okay so let's go back to the transference part we were talking Correct. about um the gambling part we're about the transference at that, at that aspect it's really easy for hey you know i I just want to pull, just want to try the slot machine one time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very rarely does it ever end up just being one time mm-hmm. for anybody, and not even those that have struggled with addiction. So that's, it could, I can so, see it so, really easy so for a transference I, there. Obviously, if you are an addict right. in general, uh, that's a very dangerous thing for you to even allow yourself to be tempted to try it. Right. I was talking to an individual uh, on the on, uh, in the airport as I was leaving, and this individual, uh, well, I was sharing with them that the hotel had given me a bunch of these little coupons for slot machines uh, and things right. of that nature. And I still had them, you know, in my wallet. Matter of fact, I just threw them away. Not sure why I held on to them in my wallet. <laughs> that might be a part of uh, the addiction thing. I don't know. Right. Um, but but uh, he was he began to share with me. I, I told him about those coupons. He said, yeah, uh, he said. And so, you know, I, I so I walked. He said, I walked into one place and I decided, you know, to, to put 20 bucks in a slot machine. And I and I pressed the button and I lost my 20 bucks. And he said, so my next thought was uh, to put another another 20 in there and see if I right. could win that 20 back. And yep. then I lost that 20. And he said, I decided to 40. put another 20 in there yep. because I'm still thinking uh, uh, that I could win my money back. And he says, he's, he, he says, well, I, I, I end up losing a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Just like and that. Just like just like that. And, and, and that's why it's it's it's. These things are looked at as a game of chance. Right. But it can suck you in, and especially, particularly, if you are a recovering addict, if right. you are a, an, an addict. That's right. Uh, uh, it, can, it can put you on the hook pretty quick. That's right. Um, that's why the addict, or not the addict, the recovering addict, right. has to guard himself right. or herself. Right. Have to guard him or herself. Now, they're going to there'll be uh, situations as you're in your recovery where, you know, there are places you can't avoid. That's right. Um, because of your job, because of, uh, uh, you know, if you're in the military or something uh, of that nature. But, but you, you still have to guard yourself in terms of if you if you're forced to have to be in that place. What people. Right. Are you going to, will you allow yourself to engage with? Right. So if you are struggling or you know somebody that is struggling with a life debilitating addiction or maybe even some of the stuff that we've been talking about today about going to places and you realize, you know, I've been getting to the wrong place and I'm starting to relapse. Hey, give us a call here at ATCTN or Heartland Adult and Teen Challenge at 833 462-8286 462-8286 or go visit our website at atctn.org and click that button there with the get help now button and somebody will get in contact with you. But if you or you know somebody that is starting to see you seeing these signs, go ahead and reach out to us and we would love to help you. Now brother, we just started you just briefly mentioned about we we're transitioning from places into people. Yeah, so it, tell, it, tell us a little bit more a, about in, that. In a sense because you know it's easy to get caught up uh, or in the in in the place being or the environment being a detriment right when it's not simply uh the environment uh it's the people in that environment and it's the things in that environment right that you have to be guarded 
uh, against as well. Very true. Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, you've heard the saying and, and you even uh, mentioned it before we started the podcast that we can become products of our environment. Right. Now, that works. That works uh, both ways in terms of uh, good and bad or positive and negative. Right. We can become a product uh, of our environment. Right. Um, myself, I grew up in an environment uh, growing up in the projects that was infested with drugs and alcohol, crime and, and uh, you know, illicit activity. Right. Uh, therefore, that was a major influence on me, not simply the environment not simply where i was right but the people and things right that were a present in that in that environment uh it's, it it goes in with what i was talking about about being in vegas it's not vegas is las vegas is not a bad place no no it's it's the people and the things that contribute to addiction in that place right and so uh, the, the recovering addict has to be mindful of not just the place, but the people right. that, th that, that they associate, that they engage in that place. Right. And that just kind of makes me think, I mean, I've heard it said, even though that you may not be doing something, but if you're hanging out with the people that are doing it, you're going to be grouped into that category that you're doing it as well. Yeah, so yeah. It, well, well, the scripture says bad company corrupts good manners. Right. Bad company corrupts good manners. So the scripture, uh, the Bible is, is even letting us know that we have to be mindful of the people that we allow to influence our lives. Right. And uh, really the only person I can really think of right off that the society saw that they were hanging out with the wrong people all the time, but he was actually influencing them versus the other way. The only person I can think of that is Jesus. Correct. Because the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all them, like, why are you hanging out with tax collectors and sinners? That's that's who you are. Well, that's not who he was. Correct. So that that's the only person, and I hate to say it to you, but you're not Jesus. <laughs> so you need to be careful with the people that you are with, uh -huh. because that's who you're going to get grouped with, and and it can cause and, a trigger for and, those and, that are and or you have to, and or you have to be. Uh, you have to be honest with yourself in terms of, uh, of of your ability to be the dominant influence or be influenced. Right. Um, I've been in recovery, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, going on 28 years. Right. Uh, there 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 are places I could I can go that a person newly in recovery uh, can't go. Right. Uh, why? Because I've been in recovery long enough to know how to be the dominant influence right. versus allowing that environment, those people uh, uh, in that environment and the things in that environment to influence me to make poor decisions. Right. Uh, uh, and, and so you got to be honest enough with yourself. Now, with that being said, even, even I'm cautious right. and guarded because I understand that no matter how long I've been in recovery, I can still be, uh, uh, influenced right. or drawn into something right uh, especially because i've been in recovery right. that long because you can easily get the mindset well i can handle it now right you know uh, um, um i i am so far removed from it right i can handle it now and there's really no such thing right and i, I think of it and it's a slow process usually that can happen that you don't even realize that you are relapsing. absolutely kind of like I mean, I've heard it when you, a frog, if you put mm -hmm. a frog into hot water, mm -hmm. it's going to jump out immediately. Mm -hmm. But if you put that frog in hot water, please don't test this though. Okay. We, we don't, we get, we get, along, yeah, huh? leave the frog alone. But <laughs> if you put a frog in cool water and you start turning that, heating it up slowly, uh -huh. the frog doesn't realize that it's starting to cook. Right. And that's kind of the same thing that you, we're talking about right. here is that it's a slow fate. There's a great right. song by, I believe it's Casting Crowns or... Uh, Big Daddy Weaver, one of those Christian bands that's called a slow fade. Well, it and goes it goes along with the uh, the uh, the adage in recovery that says if you sit in the barber chair long enough, you you're gonna, it, get, your it, you're gonna get your hair cut. That's right. And so it doesn't matter how long you've been in recovery if you keep sitting in that barber chair. Right. It's just a matter. And I tell guys all the time here that that if you're not working uh, your recovery. Uh, and you and you get out of this program, you're not working your recovery and you start 
associating again with the same people in the right. same places doing the same thing. Right. Uh, it's to, you might not do it the first couple of times or a few times, but you, you you're sitting in the barber chair. That's right. It, it, it does not make sense if if I if if I'm an alcoholic, a recovering alcoholic, that I'm spending time consistently in the company of of people who are drinking. That's right. Uh, that I'm going to a bar around people who are drinking. That's right. If I'm a recovering alcoholic. Uh, and, 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 you know, a lot of recovering that have convinced himself, well, I can go to that place, but I don't have to do it. Right. Well, the reality is, if you keep sitting in the barber chair, you will do it. You, you will convince yourself <laughs> right. that you can do it, and one is too many, yeah. and a thousand is not enough. Right. I'm just thinking it was like, well, I'm. I used to be addicted to marijuana. Now I'm hanging around people that are smoking marijuana, but it's okay. I'm not smoking it. Well, you're getting the secondhand smoke of it. But well, anyway, anyway and, and but just, it, yeah. And just the <laughs> fact that you are around, whether you get in the secondhand smoke or not, if you keep sitting around them smoking marijuana, the time will come where you will say, "Okay, give me some of that." Right. Let me try that. Yeah. Because exactly. you've convinced yourself that it's okay. That's right. So, well, brother, a we are out of time this time, but when we talked about people and places and so we still have things to talk about which we will pick up on the next podcast here on mission driven but i want to thank you for watching today and or listening to mission driven now remember if you or a loved one that is struggling with an addiction and you're starting to see some of these signs and maybe they're starting to hang out with the wrong people again or or they're getting going to the wrong places reach out to us Go to our website at atctn.org. Click on that Get Help Now button, and somebody will be in contact to help you out. Or you can give us a call at 833-462-8286. And we are here and willing to help, and we want to help you uh, to find a way that you can be clean and uh, recovery. So once again, thank you for watching Mission Driven. And remember, there is always freedom from being free from your addictions. 